Thanks for uh, posting. Um, okay, so <clears throat> okay, so the first document that I handed out to you is the new rules for 2019 season. That gives the actual rule to reference in the rule book as far as the rationale behind the rule. As the majority of you guys know, yes. Do we know before we register? We're going to get rule books this year? Do not know for sure. Okay. If you selected to get a 2019 rule book from U.S. Lacrosse, then yes, yeah. but they're not automatically going to do it anymore. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, however, it is online um, and in the National High School Federation app as well. Um, so this is just kind of until the new rule book comes out for your reference. Perfect. And then U.S. Lacrosse, since the rules and turf doesn't come out until January, they put out a document um, kind of giving a breakdown to kind of go over the rules because as you know, two major rule changes for this year is the penalty zone as well as self-starts. Um, so we will just start with the penalty zone. And as you can see on your paper, it's blotted, blocked out. It's yellow if you pull it up online. But the penalty zone area goes from across the dots up to the hashes, including the whole eight meter arc. And this is our end line back here. Okay, so that's the whole penalty zone. All right, so when we're referencing on the field, um, you know, we want to talk to the players using the same language, clear the penalty zone. So instead of clearing the eight closest way out, it's going to be now clear the penalty zone closest way out. So if you have a player, let's say you have a defender, an attacker, below goal line extended, okay? They're just going to go down, straight down, below the dots. What the fastest way out they'll be up to the side? They can go out below the side, but if you read on here, it says anyone in that box, just put, push them out and down. Okay, so it's not necessarily then the fastest way out. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then the, if you have, um, if you have a player, let's say we have a foul inside the pie area and we've set up the play, inside this pie area, this side all has to be cleared too. So the whole penalty zone has to be cleared. No matter whether you're on this side, this side, okay? Now the only difference is if you have a, a player on the dot, the penalty zone is not cleared. So if you set up an eight meter free position, or not an eight meter free Even position. Even on the goal line extended too? On the goal line extended, it would be cleared. Um, but on the dot, it would not be right. cleared. Okay. If you have a, um, let's say we have a foul in between the eight and the 12, and the attack player goes to the 12 and the defender goes behind, clearing a penalty lane. So you would not be clearing the zone. So you would just be clearing the penalty lane down from the hash marks. So all the players would just move out. Does that make sense? If it's outside the gate. If it's outside the gate. It's probably a foul, right? Um. I know. I know. In, in, I in, in NCAA, it's different, but I think, right? I think it may be spot of a foul. I need to confirm that because I thought I read somewhere that it's going to the twelve, but I will confirm that. I will confirm that. If you are, when we are clearing the penalty lane, let's say we have an attacker set up on the center hash, defender is going behind. Let's say we had an attacker and a defender right here. Okay, before we clear the penalty lane, they're gonna be coming back out just like we've always cleared, like spokes on a bike wheel. However, with this new rule, there is no more jostling for positions. That defender is allowed to have that hash mark. 
and the attacker would just be going behind. And you can see that on um, clearing the penalty zone, or as you can see, the attacker is on the inside. All right. The procedure for clearing the penalty zone remains the same as previously used to clear the 8 meter arc with the following exception. If a pair of opposing players are to be moved to a hash adjacent to the ball carrier, the defensive player will be entitled to the inside position closest to the ball carrier. So hopefully that eliminates one less thing that two people on the field have to be worrying about who was in the proper position. It automatically goes to the defender now. Yes? Yeah, according according to the frequently asked questions, just for your verification. Yeah. Uh, for any major foul that occurs between the eight meter arc and the twelve meter fan, you will still clear a lane. So that's why I think it's the spot of the foul. Yeah. Okay. That's why I think more on there. They're not going with the okay. pure NCAA rule. Perfect. Okay. So still spot of the foul. Outside clear the outside the eight. Yes. Thank you for that. No problem. Thank you. So questions so far in regards to the penalty area. Did you see did you see in here? I picked it up, but I mean I'm sure they're going with the NCAA too. What they actually did say, and they're you know, I'm sure they'll clarify it, is uh, you clear the penalty area, the penalty zone with fouls inside the eight. But that's not what I think we're doing. And the frequently asked questions, they say clear the whole thing. But I, I, I'm Where just, are you reading on that? Just confused. You go to... Uh, uh, 10 one one penalties at the bottom. Yes, establish a penalty zone that must be cleared when a major fell by a defensive player occurs in the 8-meter arc. Yeah, so I, that, that's why I think I, I, I think I think they made a mistake on that because when, when they talk about the frequently asked questions, they do say everything's got to be clear. Where, what frequently asked question number are you on? I don't know. It just, I mean, obviously, you know, when, we, when you go with when you go with the diagrams, it's clearing everything for everything, even even when it's on the uh, the hanging hash. So yeah, on the hanging hash, you are clearing the whole penalty area. Right. But Correct. we have a hanging hash. It's not part of the game. Correct. So that's why I think they made a mistake. Okay. Okay. But the hanging hash is inside the new penalty area. Correct. So basically, if the foul is inside the penalty area, you are clearing the penalty area. If the foul is outside the penalty area, you are clearing the lane. Correct. Okay. The only difference. Jesus. The only difference is if the penalty is on the dot. Right. So yes. you have a foul back Because it's far enough away already. Correct. Anyway. You're behind. It's not like okay. you're... The purpose of it is safety. So most likely a player obviously is not going to necessarily shoot from back here. Um, I think they're trying to clean up for the shooting space portion of that. Okay, so anything to the dot is not clear in the penalty zone. Penalty zone. Questions so far? Good. Welcome to the confusion, Linda. Okay. It's okay. You're not going to be on the field. I know. She's like, no, she's in there. Okay. 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 So, with that being said, so we have our zone. Does everyone understand the defender has priority to the hash mark? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Now, this is very important to remember that the penalty zone connects the two dots. So we're going to slowly move into self-starts. So if you have a shot that goes out below goal line extended, okay, no foul, it's just a regular boundary ball, ball goes out of bounds. A player may pick up the ball, carry the ball inbounds, and self-start because they are not in the penalty zone area. Okay? They don't have to wait for a whistle. They do not have to wait for a whistle. Okay? They can choose to wait for a whistle, but or are we just going to stand there? So what you will say is you may self-start. <clears throat> so if you have a player who is not self-starting, say you may self-start, you may self-start, and then whistle. Okay. 
I would say give them two and then put a quick whistle on it to get play going. It's going to be very hard in the, in the beginning. Fall ball especially, players are going to be like, do I go, do I not go, do I go, do I not go? Um, so give them the, use the verbal, may, you may self-start so that they know. Um, and then after two, give them a quick whistle to get the game going. Great question. Um, well, I read, when I was reading the rule, it said, like, if, they, if the person who gets the ball wants to wait for the other person to go four behind. And, Correct. And, and they have the option to wait for the whistle if they wanted to. But this is really going to go to teach me how to coach it, too. <laughs> no, I totally Fair. understand. So, um, so with that, um, players can wait for, the, for us to fully administer the whole penalty they can choose if they want to. Okay. And if they choose to, then you give them the, you may self, still, yes. When there's when we're set up, yep. like I say you can self-start. Right, once you yeah. go through your whole boo, and all the players are where they are, and the player hasn't self-started, use the you may self-start first, and then give them you know, the whistle after that. Because okay. the key is to get them going. Right. That's the goal, is to not let them wait to set up that whole minute. But administer everything. So, uh, with this being with this new self start, is there ever going to be a um, now? There, I guess there can be on three positions, but is there ever going to be a um, a false start then? Yes, okay. absolutely. So, false starts will be um, if you flip to page three. It says official whistle restarts. So anytime a player self-starts when they are not allowed to self-start, that would be a false start. Did everyone follow that one? Okay, here we go. So for example, for example, um, you're in the midfield. We'll start with the midfield. Okay, you're in the midfield. You have a, the white team checks the blue team in the head. You have a cardable foul. You call timeout. Okay. Easiest way to remember, a player may not self-start when the clock is stopped. Right. So that's kind of your little key. Okay. So number one is clock is stopped. Okay. So at that moment, you're getting ready to get your card. You know, you get a good hard whistle. Okay. Look at the player that just got checked in the head. Go through your administration, waiting for your partner to communicate with that player. My whistle. So they don't go. That can be a little preventative officiating there. Other times, so this is when, to answer your question, Glenn, this would be the time that a, self, a false start can occur. A false start can occur if a player chooses to self-start when the game clock is stopped for any reason, a restraining line violation for offsides, the ball is inside the critical scoring area, excluding the boundary restart that we just discussed, alternate pos possession, inadvertent whistle, any time in overtime, because the clock stops on every whistle in overtime. Right. Okay? A goal is scored, and note that self-starts are permitted after an illegal draw. The other thing to remember, players, and this is going to be very big on our part as part of a, a preventative officiating, players may not self-start in the last two minutes of each half because the whistle is stopping the game clock on every one. Even if we're 10 apart? Only exception. If you are 10 apart and the clock is running, players may self-start. Because oh. the clock is running. Because the clock is running. Yep. Why, why, why do you think that it's not on there? Um, it is. It is on there in the frequently asked questions. Um, if you go to <laughs> question nine, self-starts permitted in the last two minutes of each half when the clock is in effect depends. Self-starts are not permitted when the game clock is stopped. However, if there is a running clock due to a 10 volt differential, self-starts are permitted. Okay. So with that being said, let's talk about those two things real quick. Number one, we as a officials need to make sure that we are communicating with the players on the field and this has got to be a heightened awareness of the clock. Because we want to prevent those false starts. You know, we don't we don't want to take the ball away from a kid because he's like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize it was under two minutes. Because they're they've got so much going on, they're trying to run their plays, listen to their coaches. So us as officials not only need to communicate with each other, but also with players to help, especially until this becomes routine for them. Um, 
Can yeah. I just have a question? Yes. Because uh, again, it, it, you know, from the NCAA, there's a, uh, a stoppage of uh, there's a foul called at 202. 202, and now clock is still running, so they should be able to start. Correct. Just just like in the NCAA. Correct. Because it's under two, but that clock should still be running. Correct. Right. Correct. Great example. Yeah, that's why the clock operates here. You know how some of them say two, stop. Right. And so one thing that, um, you know, maybe as an association that we talk about, and I'm sure part of that is coming down, and um, the clock operators and announcers at the college level when this was implemented tried to help by announcing two minutes left in the game. So then it was an indicator to us as officials as well as an indicator to the players on the field like a ding, 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 you can't self-start anymore now that you're under two minutes, okay? So I think we need to talk about that as an association and figure out what is the best way for preventative officiating because that's really the goal. Um, you know, uh, yes. I mean, at Bartram, you're always going to have the clock on the board at the time on the board. Mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we don't go to the table. Schools that go to the table, it's going to create a problem. Well, a lot of us are not going to this. We didn't, I don't think we really had that much of an issue with it last year because FHSAA required that we oh, wait, 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 wait. Pardon? FHSAA required that we kept it on the board. Okay, good. Because oh, well, I, as, as, I mean, we, we I, only go to the table as a backup at this point. We don't use, we, we're not using the table as, the, as that right, final. Just tell everybody that because it was, we, we did a go to games last year where they, okay. they took off. It was the last year, so. Yeah, as long as, long as, as, as long as they don't do that because if they don't, it's going to be a real problem. All right. Questions in regards to self starts on paper. <laughs> self starts on paper. So. My recommendation um, from the official standpoint in regards to things to practice to remember is think about all these situations in the game. The biggest thing is that for the most part, it's a lot of times that we're calling timeout um, or major fouls such as eight meters um, or major stoppages of alternate possession. Offsides is another big one. Um, and then the biggest one to really remember is overtime because the whistle has stopped. So kind of think about that, add that to your captains and coaches meeting as a reminder. Remember the clock stops, you may not self-start at all. And if you go out there and in the first 10 seconds there's a foul and a kid picks up the ball and takes off, that is a tweet, a change of possession, and it is going the other way. Okay. I think we're gonna miss a lot of these, I mean that. For just trying to get used to it, we're going to be missing these. So building off of self-starts. So players may self-start within a um, stick and a half length. So 1.5 stick and a half lengths. Okay, so we have two sticks. <laughs> so one and a half. All right. So I would say... Um, is it from your body or from an extended arm? So it is where the ball is. So if the ball one stick extended arm. So if so yeah, so that's yeah. pretty it's much what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean if you extend your arm with the stick, then that is, right, yeah. that's it. That one and yep. And so if the ball is in that vicinity going all the way around, the player that is fouled may then pick up the ball, okay? As soon as she has picked up the ball and she's come to a settled position, okay, she can then continue. All right, and as if you look on, and if they, she doesn't go into a settled position, it's a false start. Um, or no, do you stop it. No, nope. and now and then you reset you it reset at it. four meters. And so, so if if a player picks up the ball and takes off down the field, you're going to give them a quick tweet tweet. You're going to bring them back to the spot of the foul. Once they reset, they can then go ahead and self start. We would never penalize a player for self-starting when she is allowed to self-start for being outside of her parameter. Okay? Coaches need better need to really hammer because it's, <laughs> it's going to be annoying for everybody out there to, if, it, if it continues. You know, like if it if it happens over and over again. I think you would be. Can you can you give a no. team a delay a game? No, I think your judgment of what a settled position is also going to be what. Like what are you, like to me, I'm gonna consider a settled position 
pick up the ball, even if it's just a brief second of a stand oh, and then go. Yeah. Just a quick yeah. pause. That's oh. all they need to do. So, I mean, if they pick up the ball and they stand there, and then off you go. So, the, so it's really what are you going to – they just can't do a run-through ground ball and yeah. go. Yeah. It's just what are you going to consider a settled position. It's not going to be I have to stand there for three seconds. Right. It's going to be maybe like so a then. stutter step or something like that. So based on – it says a, the definition is a settled stance. This is on page 2, third paragraph down is defined as both feet stationary on the ground with the ball positioned in the head of the cross and the player with possession making at a minimum a momentary pause before restarting without waiting for an additional whistle. Okay? So it is. And I think what you're going to find more often than not, players are going to be holding to they're going to be unsure. Mm -hmm. So I think at first, it's going to be a lot of, you may self-start. You may self-start. Yeah. And then at the end of the season, it's going to be when she's settled. It's going well, to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Sure. The one thing, that, and then the, the to add to it, I think we're going to be hearing from coaches, she didn't settle. Right. That's, that's your determination. Right. But, <laughs> yeah, but nothing, so, nothing's going to stop a coach except for me carding him or her. From from uh, screaming that out. But if but remember the player. If you felt that the player did not come to a settled position, <laughs> it within the 1.5 sticks length. All you do is give a tweet tweet, and you bring them back to the spot of the foul, and you restart them from there. So if your judgment or your gut is telling you that player did not stop or did not come to a settled position, tweet tweet, bring it back number five. And now you may self-start, and that and that's it. Well, we saw down in Orlando some of the biggest things like uh, the boundary balls. The girls were watching the, the uh, college games. They're coming off. They're coming. They're picking up the boundary ball and just sprinting on the field and they're not stopping, which they're allowed to do. Here we have to come on the field and just stop. It's just oh, if, if, both, if both feet are on the ground, if both feet are on the ground, it's 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 a momentary pause. Okay. All right. Because that um, happened a couple of times where they're just kind of sprinting on the field. And it's not a false start. It is not. No, it's not. Yeah. The only it's time it is a false start. start. No, 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 it's not. It's just bringing back. Just them back. Yeah. So the only time it's a false start is where it is identified A to G. Um, that is the only time that it would be a false, considered a false start. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so full of questions. No, nope, I like sure I'm right. All right, so when we flip false start stuff into defense, because mm -hmm. we don't have free movement. Correct. So everybody else needs to stop, and then defense obviously is going to start as we tell them to to move away. Is there any kind of false start on defense? So you mean when there's an 8-meter free position for attack? Oh, when it's self-start. Oh, okay. So anyone? Okay. So yes. So if there is, if so say I have the ball and I'm standing here ready to go, and Joe is my defender. He's a stick and a half away from me. Even right before I start to go, he reaches out to check, and I haven't gone yet. Correct. That would be a whistle. That would be a false start, and he would set, he would need to set him back. But yes. At least have him start moving back, and then she can go Correct. wherever. Okay. Yeah, because the kid the kid can't ask. I mean, you know, from coaching standpoint, the kid can ask you, "Can you move him back for?" As the kid starts stepping back, she can take off. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. But he did, but that person needs to be moving away. They can't be moving towards. Correct. And if they're moving towards before they go, then correct. Got it. Just making sure. Does everyone understand that? So at any time, and everybody else is stopped. Nobody else can move. Only the people within the four meters around them are permitted to move in any direction. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, to go back to the boundary ball, um, no player may self-start, as Joe said, from outside of bounds. That includes throwing the ball in bounds to a teammate to start. They must be over the boundary line to then self-start and or to pass to move that ball. Then we're just doing that same then NCAA it's just a reason it's just a response. Correct. Yeah, so reset. they just have to be in bounds. Mm -hmm. They don't As have to move two meter two steps in. Um they they should move within. Um it does say that settled stance and may self start from within two meters of the boundary. But a lot of times that kid's gonna hit that line if they have 
the opportunity and go. Now, if it is a foul at the boundary, you do want to make sure, try to make sure to move those other players four meters in. But if that player, if they're in bounds and they're within that 1.56 length and they want to go, that's on them. That's on them. All right. Your way of thinking in regards to self-starts and everything you've been taught, just kind of put it out of your brain. Um, it, it, it's going to be replaced. Yes, it's being replaced in, in a good way. In a good way. The game is going to go much faster. Um, okay, questions about self-starts. I do have some scenarios that I want to go over, but I do want to walk out to the field to talk a little bit and get a little bit of field action from up top as to what it will look like from the mechanic point of view for us. Did you go over self stars going out? Oh, no, thank you. Um, so if you have, uh, let's say, for example, um, attack charges into defense inside the critical scoring area. Um, the defender would be awarded the ball and it would not be a self-start situation because they are inside mm -hmm. the critical scoring area. You put them okay. on the eight. Okay. So, yeah, so you put them on the eight. The biggest thing to remember with that is to communicate to that defender who is so excited she just got herself a charge, all right, on my whistle, on my whistle, because there is nothing worse than that kid just taking off, and that is a hard false start and the ball would be going back to the attacking team. So really try and get in to but see them. But if it happens outside the eight, mm -hmm. then it is a self start. If it happens outside the eight. If it's not if it's not in the critical scoring area. Correct. So in the penalty zone, if you have a charge, attack comes in and charge is here. Right. Okay, what's gonna happen is no the defender's gonna be on the eight and it is a whistle start. But if it happens outside of the penalty zone, correct. Defender has self start ability. Uh, no, no it's because it's in the it's critical it. scoring area. Well, if, it's, but if it's outside the critical scoring area, yep. is what I meant. Yeah. So if the defender, so inside the critical scoring area, okay, you're going to move the attacker back four meters. And the defender is now going to whistle start. If the charge happens out here, okay, blow your whistle. Defender has the ball, and that defender can self-start right away. Got it. Okay, so anything inside the critical scoring area is going to be a whistle start. Does, All the player player that, does the player that committed the penalty have to make a move to go behind now? Or, or can away. they just be away? No, so it is still technically behind, but as soon as she starts to move behind, that offensive or offensive player has the person with the ball has the opportunity to go at any point. But she does not have the opportunity to go until the player is technically behind them. Yeah. So as you attack you, you So if you foul me and I want to go that direction, you foul me and you're in this position right here, you have to I can't just self start and run and go that way. You can. You can. Yeah. Yes. But you just said that you have to be behind me. Yeah. Outside the critical scoring area. No it's just a move. So outside the critical scoring area. Okay. That's so fine. let's have, um, can the two of you stand, please? Just okay. You're not going to do any running. No running. Okay. We are outside the critical scoring area. We'll give you the ball. Um, Outside the, in the midfield, we're in the midfield. Let's say Jen checks Alyssa through the sphere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, she okay. So as soon as I blow my whistle and Alyssa has come to a settled stance, all right, we're going to be number five. You're going four meters behind. You're not even going to probably get all of that out, and Alyssa can be going. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as your mechanic. Okay, what's going to happen is, especially as these, thank you ladies, that was a perfect demonstration. <laughs> um, as soon as these players really start to understand how to keep the game moving, they're not going to wait for your penalty administration. So you're going to have to say, you're, it's going to be, you're going to be watching and moving at the same time, especially um, on some of our more competitive games and players who understand and move that ball quickly. Um, but as soon as that whistle blows, that as long as it's in a self-starting position on the field, that player can go. 
And as long as she's a stick and a half length away. From the ball. Right. The person with the ball. From the foul. Stick and a half length from the foul. The offender does not matter. So what happens if you have well, question. Okay, so if if the ball, let's say I just got pushed and I lose the ball, right? The ball is now on the ground. As long as the ball is within a six and a half, stick and a half length away, all I do is pick up the ball and I'm in a settled position and I can go. The offender does not matter how close or how far away she is. Oh, okay. Okay. You. Right. Yes, as the ball carrier. Uh, okay. okay. Yes, as the ball carrier. The offender does not matter. Now, if I'm waiting for my offender to go four meters behind, then yes. I'm, she or has something to go. happens and the ball ends up popping like way up. over. Yes, the ball comes back to you. Ball and comes back to me, and, and then I can self start. start. Okay, that's the stick. So are these one. defenders going to figure out that they don't have to be in a hurry to get behind? So <laughs> I think <laughs> that. Don't be in a hurry. But I, that, but preventative officiating in that regard, if a team is trying to delay the game, um, if the full if the full penalty is being administered. That it definitely could be a delay of game if it's consistent and within the same. I would say within the same series, or if you're really noticing that a team is just like dragging on to get back there. But I would say number five, four meters behind, just like you normally would, um, and then that player can self start. But as a, but I, no, I'm saying I'm the defender, mm -hmm. and I you say number five, go behind, and I don't move very quickly to respond to your command. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you have, you know, instead of going around behind here to go, now I'm just like very lackadaisical and I don't really... Yeah, but you don't know where she's going to go. Yeah, I mean you're going to have some, you're going to have some ball carriers that the minute a defender turns and starts to move away, it's going to go. You're going to have some that are purposefully going to wait. You're going to have some that aren't sure what they're going to want to do. But I mean, I know. I'm just thinking as a defender, why would I be in a hurry to go behind? Correct. Yeah, you're good. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm the, and what happens if and I you're going to see? You're going to see a lot of this. As soon as you're going to see up, a lot of this. Yeah. Because they're not going to want to take their eyes off the ball carrier. Because the only time it's happening. Because you don't care. I mean, it's not that we don't care. It's not. Right, that's not the focus. Right, the focus is to get the game moving. Okay. So I think from an official standpoint, what we want to do is we don't want to become, we don't want to become lax in that regard. We still use a firm voice, number five, if the opportunity gets to that for you to direct them where they need to go. Um, number five, four meters behind. You may self-start. And a lot of times, as soon as you tell them that they can self-start, if they're just sitting there waiting, they're gone. They're gone. And if it becomes a habitual thing, then you have it, your tools. I would say give a warning, but if you're going to give a warning, follow it up with a green card for a delay of game. On the defender. On the defender. The only, the only time, the only time we have to, the player has to go four meters behind if it's in the CSA, because it's a whistle start. So they, have, you know, we will automatically put them back there, and we shouldn't blow it until they're four meters behind. Correct. Correct. That is when you were going to be waiting to blow that whistle. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I would say. Be, and it will happen. It will happen. That way. Okay. So there's no. There's really going to be no more of this. Everybody four away. Everybody four away. Right. There's no more of that anymore. That's why, that's you why, may say it, but they don't have to be four that's away. That's why free movement. That's why free movement comes next year. The what you are going to realize as an official on the field is that there is going to be less talking to the players. A lot less talking because the game is going to be moving so much more quickly that you're going to have to get into position because if you stop to talk to them, they're gone. Yep. And you're like, I just got burned and now I'm booking it down the field. Um, so I think in fall ball, you're going to see it a little bit more where they're more hesitant in the beginning of the season, they're going to be more hesitant, but then once they catch on and know when they can and can't, um, I think that's where you're going to have less communication with players. And I think it's important at captains and coaches meetings to let the players know it's okay to ask, can I self-start in this situation or can't I? Now, if you tell a player to self-start when they shouldn't self-start, okay, um, that's on you. You own that mistake. It can happen. 
It probably will happen. There's A to G to remember when they can and can't. That can be a lot that you're trying to process through. Okay, so that's where you need to make sure you're communicating with the table and with the coaches. My bad. I told her to self-start. Okay, we're going to reset her, reset the players around her, and we're going to get a whistle on it. Okay, that wouldn't be, you're not going to penalize that player for your mistake or that team for your mistake. Okay, questions about that? Are we good to walk out to the field for a minute? Yes. All right. Can I make a pot break? Yeah, of course. It's down on the left. Okay. Yeah. 